So you want to know how to like pair your audio to your motion in design. Maybe you've got like a, a podcast where mouths are talking, or maybe you've got like something you want to scale up with with volume. I don't know what you're doing, but like once you learn how to do this, you can kind of like adapt it to whatever you need, basically. Um. So right, in, in this example, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Rupert fucking Murdoch. And we wanna we wanna make his mouth move with, with our audio that we've got. Blah, 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 blah. So you've like recorded your audio, and so it means it looks a bit like that. that, that that's what a looks like. Is that even visible? Should we just use tape for that as well? Ah. So that's kind of what your, your audio looks like. Then what you need to do, you need to sort of Turn this, this audio information into like stuff you can manipulate. You need it into like animation values, really. It really isn't hard. Right click, keyframe assistance, convert audio to keyframe. And so what that does, it like makes like a ton of different keyframes along it. Look at all this keyframe information. And then so each, each sort of point corresponds to like a value over here. Okay, so now we can Look at this in the in the graph viewer in in the value graph. You can see the values that the audio is being converted to. And like depending on like how you've recorded this, this could this could be any value really. So like down here is zero. But if you go up to anything, so it could go up to like a billion or to like seven. And so if you alt click on the stopwatch, you're given expressions to write. So what we need to do is we need to tell it to look. Hey, your position is made out of your x and your y. You need to say you need to have that, and then. You need to add some, some more X to it. And you also need to add some more Y to it. And then, so when you want to animate to this, you need to tell you whatever you're animating to turn your, your not to seven values into usable values. So like, in the example we're doing is like, we're changing the position of something rather than in moving zero to seven pixels. It's gonna have to change to some, something else that fits the, whatever our composition is, basically. So we need to introduce like a, a new variable, P. You can use any letter you want. We're gonna say P equals, and we use our little whip tool to whip it to the, the slider, which has all the keyframes on it. And this is where we remap it. We say Y equals, we can use the expression ease if we want the motion to sort of be more fluid, or we can use linear if we want it to be a bit more rugged in its motion. Um, it, because it's a mouth, I'm going to use ease. We say, look at look at the values for P. Um, because we looked at our values earlier, they went from about zero to seven. Remap those to our Y values. And we want it to be moving from zero movement. And this is where you sort of got to, you got to play around with what works for whatever your composition is. So I'm going to say about 50. And because we're just doing like a an, an up and down expression, we don't actually need the, the X to move. So we can write X equals... Zero. Let's see what that looks like. Blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Easy, easy sort of keyframes and, and motion. So yeah, then, then when, when you kind of understand how that works, you can like apply it to like anything really. Basically anything that has a stopwatch in After Effects, you can use this. So go, go have fun with it.